Okay, so welcome to my What Fine Liner Is That <laughs> lesson. Um, I'm doing this session because a lot of people have a lot of questions about fine liners. And um, people often will ask, uh, what fine liner should I buy? Must it be waterproof? What does waterproof mean? What sizes should I get? So it is quite confusing. You know, you would think a fine liner is a fine liner. Like how, how confusing can it be? But it actually is pretty confusing. And um, there's so many different brands. There's so many different types on the market. So that's why I thought I'd do this session and I'd show you a whole bunch of different things about um, fine liners. So the fine liners that I've got, I've got lots of different brands that are all over here in front of me, so I'll go through them. But just briefly to start, I wanted to show you what a fine liner isn't, okay? So, because then I'm going to be talking about fine liners themselves, but just to, to prevent any confusion, a pen like this, for instance, this is a, a Lamy fountain pen. It's got a pointed nib. I use these for teaching calligraphy, but I use it with a flat nib. So this one has a pointed nib. This would be like a normal pen, as in I would just write normally with it. It's not a fine liner, but it has a fine point. So um, it's it's like the nib that's on there actually even has an F on it for fine. So it's considered a fine pen, but it's not a fine liner. This pen here is um, a Pilot G Tech. This one has a 0.4 nib. It's got a metal uh, metal point with a little metal ball. Really nice pen to work with. I would not consider it a fine liner because it has a rollable end and um, it, although it writes very fine, it doesn't kind of like behave like a fine liner would. So that's one I wouldn't consider. Then this one is a Univol Signo. So I, for those of you that have done workshops with me, I, I like these silver, um, the silver gel pens, a Univol Signo Broad. This is the black version. So this has rollable ink in it. And it has a rollable or gel ink in it and a rollable end. Really nice to write with for normal writing, not a fine liner, okay? Um, this Pilot V sign pen, beautiful to write with, very thick has quite a, um, a chunky, stubby little nib, but it has, um, it feels like a, like a thickish, kind of like a fine liner, but I would not consider it a fine liner simply because it's got a rounded end and it's, it's you're going to get different thicknesses um, and different sizes when you write with it, depending how you turn it. Um, and I would say this is more like just for normal, normal writing. So um, those pens are, um, they're all great to write with. They're all my personal pens. I like all of them for different uses, but um, I would not use them for fine liner work. Fine liners are very consistent. So if you pick up a 0 0.3 in um, a Pigma Micron, for instance, I'm just fine line. So Pigma Microns, yeah, I'm gonna go through the brands just now. But a 0 0.3 in a Pigma Micron, if I message someone and I say, what pen have you got? And they say a Pigma Micron 0 0.3, I know immediately what that pen writes like because I know the pen. It's consistent. In 10 years time, I can go and buy the same pen. It'll write exactly the same. The ink will be the same. The, um, the nib will be the same. The whole ink delivery system will be the same. They're very consistent. Whereas um, other pens, depending on how you write, what angle you hold it, they're going to give you a sort of a different, um, a different thickness. So fine liners are known for their, um, their consistency. The pens that I've got here are varying from, um, look, they're no fine liners of the disposable ones that are really expensive, but ranging from the sort of expensive right down to the quite cheap. So I'm going to go through all of them and um, also why I like or dislike um, certain ones of them. The other pens that are not fine liners are these brush pens. So these brush pens are um, my favorites for little pens. They are the two Tombow ones, the Tombow Fudenashkis. There's a, a slightly softer nib, slightly harder nib. And then this, oops, wrong one. Um, <laughs> this one is the Pentel Touch um, Sign Pen. These have flexible nibs. So when you open one of these, you might think, oh, that looks like a fine liner. If you start writing with this, if you know brush lettering and brush pens, they actually flex on the end, they bend. So you're going to get a thick and a thin um, variation. That's what makes them nice for brush lettering, but they are not fine liners. So if you try and work um, and you're wanting to draw a nice thin line and you apply a little bit of pressure, your nib will flex and you'll get a thicker line. So although you could draw with them, they're not, um, they're not technical enough and precise enough to be considered um, as a fine liner. Okay, so I'm going to move up the ones that are not fine liners, get them out of the way. And I'm um, going to bring in the fine liners. 
So with the fine liners that I've got here, I um, have got several different brands. I do sell fine liners as well. And over the years, I have worked out which ones I like and which ones I find my students like. So I now sell those ones. And um, there are lots of color ones on the market. I sell black ones only because I'm mostly using them for hand lettering and for um, when we like if you do artwork and you're wanting to add a little bit of black to your your watercolor painting or something it, it's quite nice um, to use black for the accents colors i don't keep because there's so many different colors on the market everyone has a different preference so i, I would actually just need um more space <laughs> and a bigger car for when i go to workshops so that's the reason i stick to black and i streamlined it down to um four main brands that i keep and um, there are the Pigma Microns. I'm gonna show, go through all of these Pigma Microns. I've banded them here so they're not escaping everywhere on the desk. Um, Microns, the Uniball, uh, Unipin, the Mitsubishi Unipin, Tombow uh, Mono Drawing Pins, and the Copic Multiliners. So those are the four that I um, sell and I use all of them um, often. So they're really nice pens. There is also the Statler drawing, uh, I can't remember its exact name, it's a Statler fine liner. And it looks in its, its body, its appearance, it looks similar. This is the Tombow one, it's a navy blue. And if you can see in the light, this has got a navy blue plastic um, uh, body. Here it is next to a black one. You can kind of see it's navy blue. So the Statler one is a really nice one. Um, I have Statler pens. These are my Statler fine liners. I'm not talking about these pens. These are those triangular silver ones. A lot of people have them. Um, I'm talking about a proper sort of um, like a technical fine liner and looks similar to this. And it says Statler on here. I haven't really seen them much in South Africa. I'm not sure if you can even buy them here, but they are apparently really, really nice pens. I don't know them personally, but I would imagine they behave pretty much like um, these four brands that I've mentioned here. I know my overseas students love the Statler ones. They look very much like that sort of a flat end here and it just says Statler on there. So those are also um, apparently really, really good pens. So with a fine liner, what makes it, um, the, the other name for them is a technical pen. So if you think of um, people who are doing things like, like architects or drawing plans, um, anyone doing very technical drawing where you're wanting consistency and you're always wanting to know if I pick up this pen, this is how it's gonna behave. I'm not gonna mess up my client's um, house plans because I've got a, a pen that's behaving badly. Um, the, what makes a fine liner a technical pen is things like consistency, um, ink flow, that's always good. The fact that they don't dry out quickly. Some of the metal ones you can um, refill. So Copic also, that's what I was looking for now, I can't find mine. Um, there are Copic refillable ones. So the ones that I'm gonna talk about are the disposable ones. I don't sell or use the refillable ones. They are, it's, it sounds like it would be more eco-friendly, but you have to then eventually replace the nibs and replace all the different parts and, and you're ending up buying all these bits and pieces for them anyway. So if you are doing very technical drawings and you're wanting to work in that space, then um, that's fine, you could go, um, there's all sorts of different brands and different um, styles of pens. So I'm talking more about pens that I'm using for hand lettering for fake lettering and for um, drawing, like cartoon drawing, that kind of thing. Okay, so the pens that I am going to go through first are um, the Microns, Pigma Microns, and I'm going to just discuss the sizes as well. So with sizes, it also gets confusing because, for instance, a 05 in the Micron, which is um, over here, it says um, 05 on it, may not be exactly the same as a 05 Tombow. So here's a Tombow mono um, drawing pen. Um, the 05 and the 05 may not be the same. So you won't know that. You're buying pens and think, oh yeah, I know the 05, I'm just going to buy that. Your pen arrives and maybe it's slightly different. So um, you know, like you've now got a different brand and suddenly they're not behaving the same. So when it comes to the sizes, it's quite a good idea to check your pens. If you can try them in a the shop, that's great. If you buy a pen and you think, oh, I'll get a 05 and it turns out to be quite thick, um, you may find, oh, that's not great. And you've bought it. But then, you know what, you've got a, a thicker pen. It's like not the end of the world. But you do then, you will find that the more you use these pens, the more you get to know the, the different um, sizes and the different brand sizes. So I find, um, personally, I find that the, um, the Copic 
these multi-liners. So if I take a 0 0.5 of those, and I take a 0 0.5 of the microns and a 0 0.5 of the unipin. So unipin is, um, it says unipin fine line on it. You can buy these at PA and um, some stationary shops. The Copics, you can buy, I don't know if PA sell them, but um, you can buy them at, at most stationary shops. And um, the Microns PA don't sell. They have a, a different brand. It looks similar. The body is also beige. I haven't tried them. It's got something else written on the side. The first time I saw them, I thought, oh, they're selling Microns. I picked it up and it was some. I don't want to say a knockoff brand because I don't know what the brand is, but I really got the feeling that whatever that brand was, was trying to copy these and um, hoping that people would see them and buy them quickly because they thought it's a, a micron. Not PNS fault. I'm just saying it's, it seemed very, very similar. So I would make sure if I was buying microns, I would check that it's got that little flower on there. That's the, the Secure. This is made by Secure. That's the, the company name. And the pin is Pigma Micron. The Sakura is the little cherry blossom. So these are all Japanese pins. The Tombow is also um, Japanese. So here are my um, four pins. There is also the Faber Castell um, Pit Artist pin. You don't get these in as many sizes. So I don't sell those. I sell these ones because you get all the different sizes. Tombow only do a 0, 01, 0, 03, and a 0, 05. Micron, Pigma Micron, and these others you'll get from um, a 003 right up to quite big sizes. So I'm going to check my um, sizes just to, to see how that works. I'm going to just come around and just to give you an idea of, of how you can see if your sizes, how your sizes compare. So if I pull this camera around here, you can see, look, it's going to be a little bit small on um, on the screen because I am working with fine liners. So <laughs> I'll talk about the nibs now as well, but um, just to show you. So here is a, a Pigma Micron 05. And if I do a line um, with that, um, I'm just gonna do a line going down like this. Sorry, my line's a bit skewed. Coming down like that, that's my Pigma Micron. Then I'm gonna use my 05 uni pin. Fairly consistent. You'll notice I'm also using the pen upright like that. These pens are flat on the end. So when I talk about the nibs now, I'll explain that. When you work sideways, if, you're, if I had to work sideways like this, it almost doesn't want to write. That pen is kind of asking you to hold it upright. So these definitely work better upright. So there's my uni pen, pretty much the same size. Here comes the Copic Multiliner, also 0 0.5. Also upright gives a very nice feel, um, very nice thickness. And here is the um, Tombow 05. So if I look at these and you look quickly, you'll think, oh, there's four lines that look kind of the same. If I had to, to really analyze these, and I'm not sure if it'll be a bit blurry on, on your screen, but that Tombow, the one on the end, definitely is a little bit thicker than um, the Copic multi-line. When I was using these Tombos and I was doing something, I do a lot of outlining on my lettering and I use the 01 for that. My 01 Tombow felt a lot thicker, well, not a lot. I mean, we're talking about a 01, there's the nib size, okay? <laughs> so when I say a lot thicker, I'm talking by like micromillimeters. It felt thicker than when I used my um, Copic one. So I use the Copic one quite a lot for outlining. That's this one over here. And when I did my outline, and those of you that um, do follow my, my lettering on Instagram, you will often see I do that very fast, scratchy kind of outline. So I actually just want to show you what I mean. I'm going to do a letter here in a, in a, with a brush pen quickly. So say I um, do this H over here. I'm going to do that one. I'm going to do another one. When I was working with the Copic, what happened is that size I know. So I went with my Copic, just find my one. Here's my Copic one. And um, with the zero one, I did my kind of fast, scratchy sort of quick lettering like this. Okay. I know how that one is going to behave, that zero one. Quite um, thin, I'm just going to just put the little pieces in. So it kind of normally looks the same. And I have a certain expectation of a zero one. Like I know how it's going to feel. Then I picked up the Tombow one. And this is not a, a criticism of either pen. It's just to show you how it's different. So I picked up the zero one. And I only recently got the, the Tombow um, mono drawing pens. I'm not sure how long they've been on the market globally. But in South Africa, we've literally only just got them. So I was very excited, got this pen, started using it. And it definitely had 
a slightly thicker feel to it. When I draw this, you're probably not even going to be able to tell the difference. You'll think, what on earth is she talking about? A little bit um, on the extreme side here, trying to say the one is thicker than the other. But when I write with them and I look at them and I feel them, that Tombow was slightly, slightly thicker than the, um, the Copic one. So all that that means is that my Tombow 01 gives a slightly different feel, but I can pretty much guarantee that every single time I buy a Tombow 01, or sell one to someone else, it's going to be exactly the same as all the other Tombow Zero Ones. Just means that it might be slightly thicker than the Zero Five or Zero One of the um, Copic. But then you might think, okay, well, um, it's comparable to the Zero Two in the Copic or the Zero Two in the Micron. So you start to get to know your sizes. And what I always suggest to everyone in every single class I teach, where we work with fine liners, whether it's for lettering or, or maybe you're doing watercolor and you're adding lines. Have a scrap piece of paper, test it out first. Do your stripe on, um, on a piece of scrap. The reason why I say that is because sometimes what happens, and it's happened to me and it's happened in workshops where people are working with the pens or I'm working with my own pens and you put the wrong lid back on. And um, now you've gone and mixed up your pens. Here's a zero 01 and it has a zero 05 lid on um, and vice versa. So now I pick up my pen, I think, oh yeah, it's a zero 01. I grab the pen and I start working. And... A zero one and a zero five. I'm just going to quickly draw. I haven't got the blue on here, but if you know fine liners, you'll know. So here you can see the thickness difference. There's my zero five compared to my zero one. It's quite a big difference. It's quite thick. So if I'm outlining and I grab the zero five by accident, it's going to be heavy and thick on my on my lettering. Once you start with the first stripe, it's like you're kind of committed to that. You can't really undo it. If you happen to swap it the other way. I'm going to put these lids back. <laughs> if you swap it the other way and you start with a thin one, you can always go back over it with the fatter one. So not a good idea to um, go purely by the number. If you pick up a zero five and you're working on your own, you've only got two pens or something. It's fine. If you're like me and there's pens everywhere all the time, or it's a, you're working with some friends and you've all got pens, just get into a habit of pick it up, do a stripe. And sometimes you'll do it and you're like, oh, you know what? That's too thick. Um, and then you can switch to another pen. So ultimately the sizes of like if it's a zero one in one brand, zero one in the other brand, it's not the end of the world, but you will sometimes feel different sizes. So it's kind of like buying shoes, depending on what brand you buy, you'll find that in this brand, you're maybe this size and in that brand, you're a little bit bigger, like a bigger or smaller size. Um, and it can be annoying because sometimes you'll find one brand fits your foot perfectly and another brand, it's like, it feels like it could just be slightly tighter or slightly looser. And that's sometimes how it is with pens. When you feel like you have a brand that suits your hand um, like I, these four brands that I'm talking about here are all brands that I love. The uh, Faber Castell also, I mean, I'm not mentioning them a lot here, but they are also really, really nice pens. And as I say, the main reason I don't sell them is because they don't have a whole range of, um, of different sizes. So the sizing is working from very small up to very big and very fine. The finest, for instance, in um, the microns, you're going to get a zero, zero, Three. I don't have one here. I've pulled out two zeros. You need like magnifying glasses to see the, see the little tiny numbers on the end there. So it'll say zero, zero, 003. That's the, the smallest one. These are zero, zero, 005s. You might think, why on earth would you want to write with this? It's like writing with a needle. You almost can't see the end of the nib. It is so fine. So here are the places I would use these fine pens. Whiskers on cats and dogs. Um, say you're doing sketching and with fine liners and you're wanting like a, a very sort of um, fine line and you're doing that cross hatch. Cross hatch is where you've got lines and then lines going the other way and you're wanting a very kind of light um, look. You don't, want to, you don't want thick dark lines and these are very, really, really nice. Also for touching up. So when you've written with a black brush pen and you've got a little bit of a gap, um, sometimes when you do a letter, especially like the H for instance, where you work around at the top of the letter, sometimes you'll get a little bit of a gap or you do a nice big flourishy tail and you end up with a thin and then it goes to thick and it's a bit mm, not great touching up with these is nice and then a very fine fine line is great because you can just fill in those little um gaps and you can't so i'm teaching how to cheat as well <laughs> for brush lettering so you can fill in you can kind of shape your um your tail same for drawing if you're wanting to add a really fine line tiny detail maybe you've drawn um like a um, cute little, I don't know, 
like the things I teach, little cats, little donuts with faces, tiny little cute things. And you're just wanting to, to add tiny detail. You're wanting small um, nibs like this. Sometimes a zero one is even too thick. So a zero zero five is quite nice. If you haven't got fine liners and you're going off to buy them, don't start with these small sizes. These are ones to add into your collection um, later on. So you're going from super fine right up to um, zero eight is kind of like the most accepted um, bigger size or the most widely available. If you go bigger than zero eight, um, you are having to go into the brands like Copic Multiliner will do a one, which look so it looks like ten. So this would here I've got a zero one. Okay, it's, it's confusing. That's a zero one. The one is a one zero, no dot. This has a zero point one. So that is fine. When you're going to the the thicker ones, it's confusing when you pick up a pile like this and you just look at numbers, especially if some are upside down in your hand. Um, a one is like a 10, it's it's bigger than the eight. So it's kind of confusing. That's why it's always good to test. And if you're in a shop, an extra shop, and you can, um, like you go in a shop and they've got those little pads that you can test on. If there's no pad, take out a piece of paper out of your bag, um, a tool slip, anything, or even just ask them to, to give you some paper and test the sizes because sometimes you are, um, it's confusing. You'll look at this or someone's put it back in the wrong section. I've seen that before. The zero ones are sitting where the 10 should be. So um, a 10, uh, which is one zero, and then Pigma Micron will do up to a 12, which is really thick. I don't have it here because every time I get stuck in, I sell out because they're so nice. Um, it is the thickest I've got is a zero eight. So if I do a zero eight line there, okay? So now you saw me do the zero, that's the zero one. Here is a zero five, a uh, zero eight, nice and thick. A 10 or a 12 is going to be thicker than that. And um, they still have the flat end. So a fine liner has a flat end like this. So if you look at the end, it's not rounded. It's not like a bullet end or a pointed pen, um, pointed nib. It's got a flat end. So the 10 and the 12 will actually have a flat end. They are divine to write with. You've got to hold them upright like this and you work with them. They are so lovely and thick to work with. And they're really, really nice for um, hand lettering. So if you're drawing your letters out, like I drew this H, if you're wanting to do really big chunky letters or, or big capitals and you're wanting a nice thick fine liner um, look, then go with a, a bigger one, the 10 or the 12. You can also get what they call a, the, in, in the Pigma brand, there's a Pigma graphic. So the graphic, these are microns. It says micron on it over there. The graphic is, um, this says graphic one. Okay, there's graphic one and graphic two. So graphic one, if you look here, it has a pointed end. So if I draw with that, I'm drawing next to my 08, okay? So, so there's my 08, here's my graphic one. You can see it is a thicker line. It has a cokey feel to it. Okay, so South African cokey, for the rest of the world, it's a marker. It has a, the feel of a marker, it's a pointed end. So depending on how you move it, if I draw sideways or I draw upright, here I've drawn kind of sideways, kind of upright. I'm getting slightly different looks there, just depending on how I hold the pen. So this is not a fine liner. This is the Pigma graphic. So it's different. This is a graphic one. The graphic two has a chisel end. So if you're wanting a bigger fine liner, you need to go in the fine liner sizer. So where you've got zero eight, you would go with one zero or one two, which is a 10 or a 12. Different to one like like um, like this one, okay? It's got, it will have the flat end. I wish I had some here, but um, as I say, every time I get them, they sell out. So um, the fine liner sizes ranging from 003, 005, they're very fine and right up to the big thick ones. Quite nice to have a whole range of them. It is not necessary to buy every single one, unless you're one of those pen addicts and <laughs> you need an excuse to spend money and then buy another pencil bag because you have to have space for all these things. So you might want all the sizes. Not necessary, and I'll explain to you how you know what to buy. So here with the microns, I have got um, a 05, a 01, a 02, where's my 03? There was a 03 floating here somewhere. There's 03, 04, 05, 08. Okay, so if you've listened to what I've said, you're hearing one, two, three, four, five. It's like, okay, that's one after the other. Do I need all of those? So um, short answer, no. Um, what I would suggest is start off with the basics. So if you look at um, Tombow and um, Faber-Castell, 
what they have done, so Tomba, for instance, have done a one, a three, and a five. So if you look at that, you think, okay, one, three, five sounds quite good. That is perfect. One, a three, and a five. There they are. And um, they are, it's like one, skip the two, get a three, skip the four, get a five. That is the, the like a really nice basic set. From there, you can add on a couple of other sizes if you want. But if you're wanting a fine one for little whiskers and, and small, uh, small detail, and then you're wanting a really nice sort of average size just for, for smallish hand lettering, perfect size, a zero three. And then you're wanting a slightly thicker one, maybe for slightly thicker hand lettering. What's quite nice if you're mixing your sizes, you're wanting a slightly chunkier word. And hand lettering, I'm talking about like where you would do this, for instance, where, um, what is this? Have I switched? Guys, I never switch those lids back. <laughs> Here's a perfect example. I've picked up my 05 and it's got the 01 in it. So I've actually just messed myself up here by demoing out what happens when you change those. I thought, what? My pen's shrunk. So, and we get the 05. Okay. So the 05 is um, this, the, a nice thick one. So I'm just going to demo here for you quick. So say you do an H. I'm just going to draw it and then I'll hold it up and show you. I did this on, there's one on Instagram that says hot chocolate and with the word hot like this. And I used a, a five. Um, so there's my H, nice and thick. Now you might want to put little dots in. You think, yeah, I'd like to fill it in with, with um, like a small sort of dot pattern, but I don't want it to be as thick as my outline. Then you would take your zero three, which is one down, and you can then fill that in with little dots. I'm just going to do it very quickly here. So you can get a sort of an ombre effect with um, your dots, but by using a slightly finer fine liner for your dots, here what I've done is I've filled in my H, I've shaded it with the dots, but it gives a little bit of um, like a visual texture. So I've got the slightly chunkier outline and then the slightly smaller dots, and it just creates a little bit of interest. If everything was exactly the same thickness all the way throughout, and then I wrote something else and I had it in the same thickness, and then I filled that in at lines and it was all the same thickness, it looks a little bit boring and it can be a little bit one dimensional. So by using slightly different thicknesses or fine liners for your work, you're creating that visual texture. Um, and when you look at it, your eye is seeing different thicknesses and it makes it interesting. But to buy this entire set like this is not necessary. So if you are at a starting point and you think I want to add some fine liners, I only have one pen. Look at the pen that you've got. If it's a 05, for instance, then go um, a two down and you can get a 03. A 04 is too similar to a 05. So it's you're kind of almost working with the same slightly similar um, pens or very similar pens, slight difference. So rather go a 05, jump down, get a 03. And then if you want another one, jump down again and get a 01. If you have a really fine one and say you're sitting with a 02, and now you think, well, I don't know what to do. Um, a 02 and a 04 are really good match. So they are working together. 04 is a very nice pen. And so is a 03. They're all kind of nice. Um, but when you're having two sizes right next to each other, it's um, they're too similar. So if you do like every second one, that's good. And then a 08 is quite a thick one. So these sets where you're getting like the Tombow, for instance, where you're getting um, a one, a three and a five, they don't have an eight in the set. I'm not sure if they even, I don't think they make an eight. You can buy the set like this, where you actually have, um, it's the mono range. So they do razors, they do um, pencils. I've actually got one of their pencils here as well. The monograph, really, really nice pencils. Um, the Tombow mono, and it's, it's mono with capitals, M-O-N-O. And um, this stuff is really, really nice. But that is a really good starting point like that. You buy the microns, you go into the shop, you see a whole stand like this filled with pens, all the sizes sitting looking at you like this. You don't know where to start. Remember what I said about skip one. Um, try them out. If you see a five is really nice, five is a good one. Um, four is also a good starting point. And then you can go one up, to, uh, one up and one down. If you're buying the Copic, same thing, you're going to get all the different sizes. And um, these are usually slightly more expensive than um, the Microns. So if I look at prices, the Tombos, the Microns, and these, um, these Unipins are all kind of in the same range. The Copic ones are slightly more expensive. I'm not sure what the reason is, but um, sometimes in South Africa, it can just be something like, um, like our exchange rate or the cost of bringing it into the country. Um, Quality wise, these are really, really nice. So 
you know, I'm not exactly sure what the what the thing is with the price, but they all they all work really really nicely. Okay, so um, when you're looking at sizing, you can do get away with two or three pens, and you'll be absolutely fine. You don't have to have them all. If you are wanting colors, um, I'm not sure about all the brands because again, in South Africa, we don't tend to get the whole range that they would have overseas. If you're looking at colors and you're looking at the microns. Microns, as I've said, all the sizes are available. With the colors, I have only seen colors in the 05. So there's one of my workshop ones with the tape on. It's a pink pen, the, the tape is green. Um, it's a pink one. So quite unusual to find these technical pens. So when I say technical pen, these ones, they're, they're waterproof. They are like very, um, they're, they're just very reliable pens. I'm not talking about these color ones, which I'll get to now. In these other brands, um, the ones I'm, I've been going on about now, um, Micron do colors. So they've got, I think it's about 15, 14 or 15 colors in the range. I don't really use them because when I do um, classes we're using color, I use these, um, these ones here, these stapler ones. But if you're wanting quite a nice um, technical pen, like very reliable, really nice bright ink, um, these are uh, pigment ink, they are waterproof and they're fade proof. So waterproof means you can wash over them with water. So if you're using them with painting um, and a wet brush, these are great. And um, you can also use them with other colors. They don't bleed into each other. So that they're really nice for that. So the pigment ink, or sometimes it'll say archival ink. Those are just really good quality, very strong inks. Um, Price-wise, these pens are about 35 to 38 Rand versus these ones and these stabilos, which I'll show you now, which work out at about 12 to 20 Rand a pen because you're buying them in sets. So they are more expensive, but they're not crazy expensive. If you look at the colors, I've seen all the colors in the 05s and I have a brown, I don't know where I put it now. I'm not sure if I had it out. Um, the 01 in the micron, so 01 being the very fine, one of the very, very fine ones, this the little um, little nib over here. I have, um, hold on a second, you know what? I do have a 10. I've just found the 10. I'll show you that now. That's a very thick one. So the 01, um, these numbers, they, if you're not a numbers, I'm not a numbers person and the numbers kill me when I... <laughs> Trying to work them all out. So um, a zero one, that very fine fine liner, micron, pigment micron do colors. I've seen the brown in that zero one. Not sure about all of the other colors. I think they might only do the that brown sepia color in the zero one, but their color range, and you can buy sets like this, a set of all the colors, and their colors are really nice. So they've got greens, blues, I think two different greens is an orange, a yellow, pink, red. Um, purple, all of them in this image. They are. It's a really, really nice set to have. So as I say, I don't, um, I don't sell them simply because of <laughs> space issues. When I'm big one day and have my giant shop, then I'll have all the colors. Okay. And and now very exciting. I've just found the ten. And you know what? I pulled these out to show you in the in the set in this class, and I even got confused by the number. So if you look at this, it says ten on the end, but a zero one will have a zero and then a one. If you turn this upside down and you look quickly, it could be either or. And that's where it's confusing. And I took this on, I actually thought I didn't have a 10 and um, I even confused myself. I'm gonna show you this 10. And I only realized now when I saw the um, nib size. So let me just draw that same H. I'm not gonna do the dots, I'm just doing the outline. This nib, look at that stunning nib. It's really thick, really, really, there's my finger, really fat, um, chunky nib. It's flattish on the ends. It's not like a sharp corner, but it's it's quite flat compared to that pigment graphic, which is sort of a, a pointed nib like that. So um, so the zero one is the 10, I mean, the, the 10 writes like this. So look how nice and thick that is. So there's my zero eight and there's my 10. And that's really nice and thick. So the, the bigger sizes, like the 10 and the 12, this comes in a 12 as well, which is even thicker than that. If you're doing a big sign and you're doing like it's a birthday party or something and you want to write out happy birthday and you're wanting nice thick letters, these are amazing for that. So that's um, why I'm very happy I found it now. And um, it's, it's very thick like that. 
for small lettering and small writing, these are terrible. But then you can have this as like an added on extra later on. It's not necessary. <laughs> you could also use a, a normal marker for, um, for your big sign. Okay, so the, um, the markers that I have are common brands in South Africa, commonly found brands. There is another one. Um, this is a Derwent. This is a purple one. And um, when I write with the Derwent, what is this, a uh, 03? It's a 03. It feels exactly the same as the Micron 03, the Unipin 03. They all kind of feel the same. Derwent, it says line marker on here. That's just their brand um, or their name. Copic will say multi liner. They all kind of have their own thing. So Unipin will say fine line. Um, Tombo will say mono drawing pen. They all have their own. Like the instead of just saying fine liner so the derwent one is called the line marker and it has this hexagonal cap the shape the pen itself is round and it's got this hexagonal shape i happen to have a purple one because i don't um sell these pens and the main reason is because i struggle when i started teaching um full-time and selling pens and then i struggled to get hold of the derwent i could find them at herbert evans and not in a lot of other places. So I didn't go with Derwent, not because there's anything wrong with it. They're really nice pens. I did have one, there was a Derwent graphic as well. And um, it's graphic with a K on the end, not a C. These are great pens. This one happens to be purple. I actually was given this one um, when you order from Art Savings Club, they often put freebies in with your, um, so thank you Art Savings Club. And this came with it and it's a really nice pen. So this is not one of my selling pens. <laughs> I don't have Derwent for sale, but if you buy a Derwent, Derwent's a really good, and then there, there's the, um, the little logo over there. They do a lot of art stuff. So um, people that are painting and drawing and that, um, they all know this brand. It's a British brand. And um, most of the paints I've got here are Japanese. Faber-Castell is um, German and this one is British. So it competes with all these other pens. Um, it's also, it's got the whole thing on the side. It's permanent. It's, you know, it's, it's a technical pen. So when you hear technical pen, it is these pens here, all of these ones that I've been talking about. Um, and these have got plastic nibs. So that sounds weird when you see what plastic nib. Um, it's a felt tip nib. So it's fibers that are all stuck together. Or I'm not sure if they're stuck. I'm not sure how they're made exactly, but they, they jam together very tightly. They're flat on the end like this. But if you think about what that fiber is made of, it's some kind of plastic material. So it's like the brush pens where the nib is flexible, but these are hard. So instead of it moving, it's rigid. It's, it's completely hard. What makes these technical pens is that when you're drawing lots and lots of lines, they don't break easily, they don't lose their points um, too quickly, and um, they are very um, reliable. You do get ones with metal nibs. So where I'm saying this has got a plastic nib, it's got the black plastic nib, you get metal ones and um, those are uh, engineers, architects, people like that will use pens like that. It's not something you're gonna generally find um, person like me does hand lettering and a bit of artwork I'm not going to bother with a, a very fancy very expensive um, technical pen refillable metal nib it starts to get pretty pricey and um, you can refill those the nib itself is like a metal tube so the difference between a metal nib pen and a, and a plastic fiber tipped pen is um, also the scratchiness so when you work with one of these they're, they're softer they're easier to use um, when they're easy to use, they don't, you don't feel like you're gouging into the paper. So these are really, really nice. A metal um, nib is, it looks almost like, if you think of a clutch pencil without the pencil part sticking out, and you've literally just got that metal tube there, it kind of looks like that. And when you draw with them, the ink comes down through, um, so you refill the end, you can, and I'm demoing with a pencil, but you take the end off and you can refill with the ink, you can use a um, a little dropper like an eyedropper thing and you can refill the ink you buy special ink for it there's a whole process for that so i do not i'm not going that route because um the kind of work that i do this sort of thing hand lettering um fine liner drawings and that i don't need such a fancy pen such a technical pen if you are um working and doing technical drawings and you are uh, you prefer a pen like that that's great there's a lot of pens on the market and um, a pen like that, when you're refilling it, will last you for a really long time. These, unfortunately, are disposable. So from an environmental point of view, not great. However, they do take a really long time to, um, to dry out <laughs> and to, to get finished. The only time that I have destroyed a pen, like outright, just destroyed it, and it, it was a very sad moment, um, I bought one of these. 
and um, it was a 03 and it was the first time I'd ever used a 03 and um, I bought this pen and I was like wow this is quite a while ago I bought it and it's got this beautiful little fine nib I hadn't even used it I literally took it out I don't know what happened I dropped it or it, or it was on the table it rolled off and it hit the tiles face down or like nose down and it literally hit and snapped the end snapped off and I picked it up and, and the whole piece because these are very fine these are delicate so when you're writing with them they, it's it's great you use them you're not going to break it by writing but if you apply pressure or you or you twist it and you apply pressure sideways so obviously mine hit the hit the floor and I felt like I dropped my child <laughs> and its head broke it was very bad and um I didn't even get to use it and there was no saving it it literally snapped off you can't glue that back on I mean that nib is finished that pen it's like okay so you know say a few words and then in the bin and um so in that way these pens are not great because like the metal one if I dropped that it would have been fine I might have damaged the nib though the, the metal but I'm sure it would have been fine these ones, if you look after them, they do last a really long time. Um, they can dry out. And if you leave the lid off, obviously they're gonna dry out. What has happened to me is um, I got these Tombow, these brand new Tombow ones, the first time I ever tried them. So Tombow sent me um, one of these sets to try. Very exciting, got them out, did something for Instagram. Um, and if you've seen any of my pictures on Instagram, I will often have the lids off the pens. And the reason I do that is because people quite like to see the lids. Plus, it, it looks pretty. So for Instagram. And I had my brand new pens. Um, and it was probably about, it was about this time of the day. It was like, you know, between three and four in the afternoon. And I, I needed to take a picture quickly before it got dark. Had all the pens out, took the picture, had the lids off. And I think there might have been a Copic as well in there. The next day... Because I went and I edited the photo, put it on Instagram, forgot about everything. I'm quite pedantic about the lids, so I'll normally make sure the lids go back on. Um, the next day I come back to my desk, because where I work at home is I only work, I only do art and lettering and stuff there. So I'd walked away and I, I didn't have a reason to go back. Next day I come in there, the pens are sitting with their lids off. My brand new Tom, <laughs> nearly had a heart attack. I did have a heart attack. And then um, someone had told me, um, if you have a pen that's drying out and you put it into alcohol, so not red wine, like, you know, um, rubbing alcohol or something, it would work. So I don't have any of that alcohol. I do ever have hand sanitizer like most of us do. So what I did, I thought, let me try it. Took my hand, sprayed the hand sanitizer. I, I was, it was like life or death. We must revive the pens. I didn't even have time to go look for a bowl. Sprayed hand sanitizer into my hand, took the pen's nose in my hand like this, and I, I literally let it drink. <laughs> Sounds nuts. I put it in. I was like, okay, please work, please work. And um, waited a few minutes, um, put the lid back on, and then I used them. And these pens are fine. Uh, these are my, the same pens that I left the lids off, and um, they were 100%. So these were brand new pens. So there was ink in there already. So I'm not sure about a completely dead pen because people ask me, like, when my pen has run out of ink, is there anything I can do? So I've seen um, YouTube videos and blogs where they'll take the end off, they'll drip ink in here, they'll refill. There's all sorts of things you can do um, to get the pen working again. But in that case, I left the little, it was carelessness and the hand sanitizer really worked. Um, apparently it works with brush markers as well. I haven't tried it because I haven't yet left a lid off, thank goodness. Um, but so that you can try. The, um, the refillable pens, uh, you know what, if you want to go that route, you can, but for most people, because of the length of time it takes to um, use up one of these, the disposable ones um, are usually the way to go. If you're wanting colors and you don't want to buy all those, those micron ones, you can go with these pens. There is nothing wrong with these pens. So mine will have um, flamingo washi tape on because <laughs> they workshop pens. Um, I have different colors. What happened is I went to Herbert Evans and I bought this set. I thought, okay, I'm, I do a lot of kids' classes and um, card making workshops, brush lettering parties, birthday parties, that kind of thing. I didn't want to buy expensive pens. I wanted pens that I could literally just throw out all the kids. And, and I, I work with kids from about eight years up. They can be hard on pens. So I bought these and um, I'm missing a few colors here. I just pulled out a couple, but I think they're about 10 or 12 in the range in the set that I bought. And um, they were probably about, I don't know, like 120 rand. So if it were 10 pens, that works out 12 rand a pen. Really cheap compared to 60 rand a pen and um, 38 rand a pen. 
So I thought, oh, I'll see how it goes. These pens have been amazing. So they are stapler ones, these triangle ones. This is stapler tri plus fine liner. If you look at the pen um, like that, it is a triangular shape. Most people know this pen. When I pull it out, they all know this pen. A lot of people have them. The other one that a lot of people have, I don't have the, the pack of these, the, the uh, packaging. This set is still in its, in its um, pack. This is only a six set. This was, um, there was a price on here somewhere. Ugh, I, I worked it out. These are also about 10 rand a pen, 12 rand a pen. Very, very good value for money. This is Stabilo. Um, there's Stabilo. It's another brand that people generally know quite well. If you are not wanting to buy these more like technical, fancier pens, I'm not sure if this will still be considered a technical pen because it's more of a sort of everyday fine liner. I don't think you would find architects and engineers using these ones. They are more likely to go for um, something like this, which is like a, it's a better known um, brand in terms of the technical pens and um, probably a better quality than these. I don't know how well these would last. These have been fine going through kids' parties and I use them when I do um, hand lettering, any hand lettering about that thing that I did now where I added the dots like that. If you're doing that, look, this is quite a big H. If you're doing smaller ones and you want wanting color, little colored dots and lines and patterns, or you're doing little drawings, um, like kawaii drawings, and you want to add some color and you don't want to use a marker, it's like a, like a Koki type marker. These pens are amazing. And you get them in all different colors. I just have a few um, of the colors. But if you look at this Stabilo one, it's got a red, it's got um, like a lilac -y color, it's got a sort of magenta color, there's um, a blue one, a green one, a black one. That is great. You can buy a much bigger set with other colors in. These are brilliant. So I tried them out. This says 04 on it. And um, it says, I'm not sure, it doesn't say waterproof. Uh, I didn't actually test that. Anyway. These ones here happen to be waterproof. It says on them, dry safe. And I've tested them. And, and the best way to test your pen, if you're sitting with these and you think, I don't know if they're waterproof. What do you mean waterproof? Take your pen, draw a stripe. So just do a stripe like I've done on here. So you take an ordinary piece of paper. This is um, not fancy paper. This is school book paper. Okay, it's the same paper I use for teaching um, all my hand lettering classes. Do a line and take some water. Even if you take your finger, wet your finger, go over it. If the ink kind of bleeds and you get the smudgy gray look um, or whatever the color is, if it goes like kind of funny, it's not waterproof. If it stays, if that line does not move and that color stays um, nice and, and um, straight, like the line stays straight and the colors don't blur, then, <clears throat> then you know it's waterproof. If it blurs and it goes all like smudgy, it's not. So that's quite important if you're doing something like hand lettering where you are wanting your colors not to blend into each other and you don't want that smudgy, dirty look. If, however, you use, say you take this mono pen, this Tombow mono pen, which is a waterproof pen, and you use that, and then you color in with these, you're fine. Because the black is not moving. This pen is not going to move. So if you have a whole bunch of color pens and you're not sure what they are, and it's like, are they waterproof or not? And it's like, OK, I don't really know. But you want to do nice hand lettering and you want that crisp black edge or you're wanting to add lines and you're wanting to draw lines afterwards or dots after you color make sure your fine your black is waterproof and then the others it doesn't really matter so these i honestly couldn't even have told you i went and i found them because um they were in a pencil bag so i wonder if they are waterproof and i had a look and it says dry safe on them what it doesn't tell you is the size so now i have no idea what size it is and you look at the end it's like okay well they look pretty fine if I go and compare it to one of my um, other black fine liners, I would guess it's about a 03 to a 04, somewhere around there. Um, this one happens to say 04 on it. So it's a set of color ones that happens to say 04. And then if you don't know, if you just look at 04 and you have no clue, that's another reason I'm doing this session, is because 04 is a really nice, like average sort of everyday size. It's not that crazy tiny whisker size. It's not this really big thick size here. It's going to give you a very nice um, in-between size. So if I go and take one of these, um, and these are the ones that have got like a, um, it's a hexagon. So it's a, it's a hexagon, <laughs> yeah, hexagon um, shape. And um, the, these are the Stabilos and it's got the white edges. And um, these are the stapler ones, the triangular ones. These you can buy in any station shop. If I do a line of um, like with my Stabilo ones, 
and I do a line like that. When I say an everyday sort of size, I'm going to do one with the um, with the state line, one with the stabilo. If you look at that size over there, that's a really nice size. So there's my crazy thick size 10. Um, there's where I outlined in the, the one, which is very fine. This, um, these sizes here, whether it's a 0, 03 or a 0, 04, 0, 05, it's not the end of the world if you're not sure what that means. But that's these pens generally are coming in like easy to use sizes. So if you're buying them for school or for work and you're just wanting to have different color pens, these are great. You don't have to go and buy the fancy ones. If you're doing um, watercolor painting, like when we do watercolor classes and we're doing outlining and that, I would not use these. I would use, um, we generally use the, the microns actually. Um, these microns and I would maybe use some of these others we just happen to mostly use these because these are the ones I have mostly for the workshops so um, like my actual workshop pens not the selling ones um, the pens themselves the nibs are quite like th these are quite good quality however if you go and drop them like I said about that topic one it just snapped right off same thing happens when you're working on um, rough paper. So if you've gone and painted something, and you've got your watercolor painting and you want to add a little bit of black, you want to add some fine detail, you want to outline, you want to write over it. When you use any of these pens, they're going to work fine. But as you're writing with them, the more you use them on, on a rough surface, like a painted surface, or even um, watercolor paper's got a texture, but it is coated. But even so, it's slightly bumpy. Eventually, you'll find that you will damage these nerves. So what a lot of people have done is they've bought um, a set of fine liners that they keep with their art stuff. And those are the ones they use for, um, for adding to their artwork. And then they have another set that they use for lettering only. So the nibs are not, um, you know, you're not taking a pen that's maybe been damaged on watercolor paper and then you're using it for your um, for your lettering. So it is quite nice to have your, um, your pen separate. Um, if you are buying pens, uh, there's a whole thing about how do you store the pens? Should they be upright? Should they be sideways? I mean, this goes for brush lettering as well. Um, my pens generally live in pencil bags, okay? So they are lying kind of like this anyway in a pencil bag. My pen, that, that's my, um, the ones that are, they travel around with me. So I do a lot of workshops all over the place. The pens live in the pencil bags. The ones in my shop box, um, I have a big crate for all the pens that I sell, all lie like this. Not because I'm, I'm fussy about them, they just happen to lie like this. So most people, if the pens are in a pencil bag, they lie like this. If you are working at a desk and your pens are sitting in a cup or in some kind of pen holder, they often are upright like this with the point up like that. Mine at home all live like that. I've never had an issue with that. I've never had some problem where I pick it up to use it and now it doesn't have ink and I've got to do it like that. The pens are, are fine. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. Um, leaving the lid off is more of an issue than, than how do you store the pen. So if you go and read on the manufacturer's websites, they will often say, keep the pens like this. I think they say that because <laughs> they're supposed to say that. But honestly, keep them upright um, like this because they look pretty on the desk and it's absolutely fine. The sizing, um, you might think, why are the sizes different for the different um, brands? Um, the sizing, often it works on the width of the line. So if you look at a measurement, and um, I'm not sure exactly how they come up with 0, 03 or 0, 04, but sometimes it's working on, on the width of the line. So you draw a line, you measure the width of the line. It's not necessarily to do with the actual width of the nib. So that's, um, it's like a, it's a weird way of, of measuring. I would honestly say, if you're wanting to know what your pen sizes look like, and you've got a lot of pens, maybe do some kind of, of swatch thing where you do all your stripes, write Pigma Micron, do your stripes, write your, your sizes next to it. Then you do Tombow Mono and you write, uh, do, your, do your lines and you write your sizes. Um, I just know my pens from using them a lot. So, um, so I, I don't, I'm not a swatch person. <laughs> I don't have a whole bunch of um, color swatches now. Um, okay, so that is the fine, the, the black fine liners I, um, and, and the color ones. I do have a couple of other pens I just want to show you here. They are not fine liners, but I just want to cover them quickly in the same session. Um, when you're looking at um, colors like these type of pens are fine, all the color microns, those are fine. That's a fine liner with color. If you are looking at um, metallic pens, gel pens, I've got um, white ones here. I've got some other pens as well. 
I've also got silver and gold in that. These are not fine liners, but when you're doing lettering or art, um, the way I would do it or teach it, you often are using these pens with your other pens. So it's quite nice to just know a little bit about those. So a gel pen, these are all gel pens. A gel pen has got the gel ink in it and it has a roller ball end. So if you look carefully at the end, because people often ask me like, what are, or, or I explain about a roller ball and they're like, oh, that's so interesting. On the end, it has a metal ball, a round ball, and, and the, the, it's like a triangle, metal triangle that comes up and the ball sits inside there. And as you write, that ball moves, it picks up ink and it puts it onto the page. So it has a roller ball um, and the word ball point is also coming from that. So, and this has gel ink in it. And um, these ones are the jelly rolls. So jelly roll is made by Secura, same people that make these. It also has the little um, flower on, although not all of them have, they used to put the flower on. Um, I've noticed they don't anymore. The jelly roll is made by Secura. So are these and so are the Koi brush pens. So if you have a Koi brush pen, um, have some here. These are, are the Koi brush pens, all the same company. The jelly roll pens um, you get in, oh, there's about 30 different, I have all of them. Um, there's the moonlight markers, there's the um, oh, the angel, I think it's angel, something like that. There's a whole a starlight moonlight, all different kinds. Some are sparkly, some are better on black paper, some are better on white paper. Um, there's lots of different kinds. So I don't um, have them, but I don't sell them. The only ones I sell, I happen to have this pink one because it was really pretty. This is great on black. But in terms of, of adding other things other than fine liners to your lettering and your artwork, these pens are amazing. So the Jelly Roll white ones and the, um, the Uni Ball Signo white. Okay, so this is how they look. Um, Jelly Roll come in 0508 and 10. I'm holding two tens here. I don't know what. I'll just put the one down. So the ten is the thickest. Ten is nice. It's really thick. And why thick is important. And when I say thick, I mean it's a normal looking nib, but it gives you a really nice thick line. So when you've done lettering and you want to add a little bit of white into your lettering, and you often see that on on um, pictures online, it's like, oh, it looks so amazing. It looks like three D. It looks like the letters shining and it's reflecting. It's this. So either the Uniball, um, the Uniball Signo, this one or the Jelly Roll um, white. It's, um, I don't really have a preference. I kind of go between the two, but it must be the thicker one of these. You get sets of the Jelly Rolls. So this says 10 on it. You get a set that has the five, the eight and the 10. That's fine. The, the five is really fine. It's not, it's not great for, for the lettering, for adding um, highlights. If you're buying these loose, buy the 10 if you can. I sell the eight and the 10. Some people prefer the eight, it's a little bit finer. Most of us who like a nice thickish white line, we like the 10. Um, with these though, when you go over lettering and now you've written out your word and it's got pink, for instance, you go do one stripe and it's like, what? It's looking pink. The pink, because you're working generally on, um, like these pens are water soluble. So when you work, say I use that pink and now you put a, a white stripe over it, the pink is going to mix in with this white ink and it shows through. Let it dry, go back over it again with the same white stripe. A white pen. You might have to go over a couple of times to get it to look a bit more white. Um, these are really nice. They are not fine liners, but I feel like with what the kind of lettering I do, they, they work nicely together. So um, you could edge your letters in um, your fine liner, do your, your black outline, and then you can add your white for um, your reflection. I will sometimes do, especially if I'm doing this this look that I did earlier here, the slightly messy look, I'll add a little bit of white up there and I'll sometimes take the black and add a few very fine lines and that's where the fine fine line is nice onto the letter just to kind of have a little bit of like a bit of shading or something. The silver is also nice for um, adding to your letter. So the silver one is also a uniball signal. Okay, that is the uniball white. If you look at the lids, the lids are different. This is a broad, this is a normal one. Um, the, the broad silver and the broad gold give a really nice thick stripe. I'm a big fan of a silver. Gold for me, gold gel pens often are a little bit yellowy, so I'm not a huge fan of, of, of gold um, gel pens. The silver is beautiful. It's got a beautiful thick end. It's really nice. These last forever. Um, all the, the paint is normally worn off and it's normally looking quite sad. Like if you've used the pen so much and the ink will be sitting there and you've still got all of that to go. They last forever and ever and ever. They're right over anything. They're great to add to your painting as well. Beautiful thick end. 
in South Africa, you, you can get, um, so if you look at the lid shape, the lid shape is kind of telling you which one it is. Um, this slightly smaller lid is um, the fine or the normal size. This one, and these you can buy at PA. These ones are um, the thicker one. So in South Africa, you cannot get the white in this thick size. This is called uni, um, Uniball Signo, and it says on the lid broad over there. This doesn't say anything, it's just normal. So I didn't know that you can get um, the, this broad size, this big thick pen in white, because you can't buy it here. And then I saw it online somewhere overseas. It's like, well, that's so not fair because <laughs> Because this, can you imagine how thick and amazing the white would be in this beautiful big pen? If I ever manage to get them, I will tell you all and you can, you can get them. Um, I have tried looking even on Amazon. They're really expensive to bring in. I don't know why. I don't know what the reason is. And these you can buy in, um, in p and in the thinner one. So, so this size, a slightly thinner one, you can get the gold and the silver. And then in this one, you get the gold and the silver. I would not buy the gold and silver in this thinner one. I have had them. They're very scratchy and fine. They're, they're not great. This is the way to go, this big, thick one. I would not waste your time with any other um, silver or gold metallic pens, except maybe the jelly rolls. If you can get a gold and silver in the jelly roll, which will look like this, they always look the same. The lid color will have, uh, or the lid will have sparkly, um, like it'll be like a sparkly lid. That might be fine. This is still the best I've ever found. Um, the other ones that go nicely with your lettering or your artwork, if you've added some black and you've added a little bit of white, now you want to add some, some metallic, um, these paint pens. So anytime you hear that ball, that makes it a paint pen. If it is like this, if you shake it and there's nothing, it's a, a gel pen or a fiber felt tip pen, fiber tip pen. These paint pens, the gold and the silver are amazing. So this is a bullet end, okay? Um, so a bullet end looks like this. And um, when you pump that on, like you pump that onto the um, paper, the ink flows. It's like a paint. It's really thick, really metallic. These are brilliant. So quite thick, definitely not a fine liner. They work well with the fine liners. You can get, um, okay, these are water-based, all of these are water-based ink. These are oil-based. If you put this on your page, you will see on the other side, it'll, it'll look like an oil patch. You can get these paint markers in a fine liner size. Okay, so you can get them, don't buy them, just don't even go there. These very fine pens, like say you're looking at the 05 and the 08, these beautiful um, ones, they're stunning to work with as a fine liner. When you start with the oil based pens, this is, this says fine on it, but look how thick that nib is. That's not a, that's fine if you're looking at the bigger nibs. Um, if you're looking at this paint that's in here, and you, you do get, a, there's one that says EF on it, and it's for extra fine, it says EF over there. And when you look at the nib, it has a metal um, nib, it actually looks like, like it looks like, like this, except it's got the silver paint coming out. I've bought and thrown away so many of those pens, they bleed terribly. Um, when you write with them, they are like, you. they might write for a bit and then suddenly they blob on your paper, or they stop writing. And then because the nib is so fine, you've got this tiny little, um, ink delivery system, the skinny little tube, and then you've got this thickish paint that's trying to come out there. They blot, they, they blob up and, and block easily. You're then pumping them and you're trying to get the paint flowing and suddenly it goes all over your page. Then you, it's fine. You've done it on scrap, hopefully. Pick it, maybe take some of that ink, try and write on your paper. It stops working, then it blobs, then it leaks, then it's all over your hands. So the fine um, oil-based fine liners where you've got a fine nib but you've got this ink in it i would avoid buy them but buy it at your own risk and you'll remember <laughs> remember my words so if you're wanting fine niche gold and silver um, and white and that go with the gel pens um black you go with a fine liner and if you're wanting beautiful um like a proper sort of gold and silver and you're happy with a slightly thick i use these for dots around the outside of my letters i will sometimes put dots on my letters i don't draw lines with these on the letters they're just too thick but they add accent to your to your um, artwork if you are looking at white um, and you are going with these these are great if you're wanting a thicker white so now say you're doing your um a nice big sign and you're wanting a thicker white these are paint pens so these are not fine liners i know we are discussing fine liners but if you if you're working big and you're wanting quite a fine look 
for your letters or you're drawing a flower or something. These are paint markers. So these nibs, if you look here, these nibs are actually, they're bullet nibs, so they're quite fine. So you can get quite a nice line. I'm just gonna use this black one and do an H over here next to where I did the, um, the fine liner H. You'll actually see it's quite nice, but these are paint markers. So if you're working big, there's my size, there's my eight, there's my 10, and this is the paint marker, the Pilot Pintle paint marker. And you can see that it's, it's a little bit skewed. <laughs> it's quite nice and thick. So if you're looking for something that's slightly bigger and, um, and durable, more durable than a fine liner, um, and when I say durable, you can write on anything. You could write on glass and mirrors and um, shiny gift bags and that with these pens. But they have a sort of a fine liner vibe in that they give you a nice um, thin line. If you're working on paper or um, on your artwork and on watercolor paper, um, then the, the fine liners are the way to go. Okay. Are there any questions about any of this? <laughs> I've talked lots. <laughs> okay. Oh, one last thing. If you have one of these pens, um, which I know, Tahani, I know you've got, you take off the oblique. Okay, let me just do that before I disassemble it. They come like this. This is an oblique holder. It's got this piece on here. This is for doing um, modern calligraphy. Okay. So your nib would sit at an angle like that. Um, there's a whole reason behind why the nib does that. That's for writing. When you are drawing, if you decide, you know what, I want to go old school, I don't want to use a fine liner on my um, on my artwork, you take off the oblique, the oblique is this little piece here, put your nib in, and you turn your pen into a straight holder. If you look in the old days, like in the past centuries, when people were drawing, doing cartoons, cartoons didn't suddenly start because we invented fine liners. Cartoons were around for a long time. You think about manga drawing, um, and the Japanese style of drawing. Um, a lot of that was done long, long, long time before um, fine liners. And they used to use, maybe not these pens, might have been feathers, could have been something else, but um, they were using dipping ink. So you could take this pen as a straight holder. So whether you're left or right-handed, you use it as a straight holder. You dip it into your ink, your black ink. And if you're using Sumi ink, it's waterproof. And you draw as if you're using a fine liner. So you would literally draw like this and you use it like a fine liner. So sometimes in our watercolor classes, instead of using um, fine liners, we'll just use these, you know, if it's a class people are coming to. I've got um, pots of ink, you dip into your ink, draw with that. If you're using Sumi ink, the black Sumi ink, it's a Japanese drawing ink, um, it's 100% waterproof. It's very black. You can paint over it, you can work with it over your painting and um, you can wash over it with water. So these become like fine liners. So they're not classed as a fine liner, but if you think of drawing before fine liners invented, this is how they would have done it. And they would have dipped in and drawn. And sometimes when you buy these pens, it'll actually say on the packaging, um, comic nib or manga nib. It's coming from those days when they were doing um, drawing comics and doing the manga drawing with these um, these pens. Okay, not, maybe not a fancy rose gold, mobile holder. <laughs> it usually is like just a plain standard holder with probably a, a slightly shorter nib. You get ones where the nib is actually built in. You don't pull it out like this. These ones are, um, they're loose. So um, so that's that's just another way. It's like going old school and you're dipping and you're drawing. Nice thing about that is if you're wanting to have a, a thin to thick line, like you're doing a little bit of texture and you're drawing and you don't want a completely uniform line, these, as you apply pressure, the nib splits and it gives you that slight thick and thin. And it makes drawing quite fun. So um, yeah, so that's just a, another use for these pens. Okay, so that's about it for final. I think I've covered everything. Just looking around my table. <laughs> okay, guys, thanks so much for joining me and you're welcome to message me with any, um, any questions you have. Okay, thanks so much. Bye.